In this segment of the video, I'm going to show the render.com cloud provider and some settings that I will be working on to make this work. So here we have a new render account that I created for the purposes of this video. And so basically what we're going to do is choose web services. It, as it says here, includes zero downtime deploys, persistent storage, and PR reviews. Scale up and down with these. Now I'm set up on a free account, which render does allow you to do some things for free. And so I'll go ahead and click on new web service. And off screen, I went ahead and connected it to a private GitHub repository that I called Scott's Chatter PDF Bot. And so I'm going to go ahead and click on connect here so we can start the process of getting this configured. So now it tells us that we're going to deploy a web service and we have to fill out some fields here. So I'll be back in just a minute to show those settings. All right, so let's take a look at some settings here. I called this name Scott's Chatter PDF Bot and I selected one of the regions here. You can see there's four different regions and I'm using the main branch in the code. I don't put anything in the root directory. I leave runtime for node, but there are other options. And then there, you can see my build command there, npm space install, semicolon, npm run build. And then the start command is npm space run space start. And now we come to the free part. So I have not entered any payment information. You could see if you wanted to increase your instance type with higher limits you have to enter payment information but I am on the free plan for this and it does work because I've tested it in another configuration so I'll select free and then you can come down here and select advanced and if you will need to set up some environment keys but I've already done that so you can either put them down here and I'll show them in just a second. Or you can put them in a global file, which I've done here, the global environment group. I called them YouTube and ENV for environment variables. And then you can see the variables here. And I'll show the values, Langchain, JS Index, North America, Northeast GCP, and then the public, uh, pocket base URL, which we'll, we'll get to that. Um, actually, for privacy, I won't show that, but you do need to point that at your public URL for your pocket base that we will talk about in another section of the video. So because I've already set up this uh, environment group, I don't have to set it up again. So now I will go ahead and click the create web service button here. Off screen I had accidentally clicked on this add environment variable so I'll go ahead and delete that and come back here to our screen and click on create web service. So we'll go ahead and let that build. And I'll be back in just a minute when it finishes. I will say that using the free version of render, it is slower. And they even say that right here. Are your builds too slow? Upgrade to a paid instance to go faster. But I don't mind on the free account for just testing purposes. It's awesome. I mean, it feels to me like the render.com is like a kind of a miniature version of Heroku and it's just easier to configure and use. So it's still running, hasn't been too long. Now it says the build was successful and it's going to begin the deployment process. 
Okay, so I waited a couple minutes here and it did build it. And now it shows here that it's ready and it started it in their environment and it says the service is live. So we'll take a look at testing it here in just a moment. All right, so let's take a look at a couple other settings here on the render dashboard. So here on this screen, you can see the name that I gave it on the other setup screen, Scott's Chatter PDF Bot. Deploy succeeded, web service, runtime node, and it was last deployed six minutes ago. And so I'll go ahead and click on this now. And on this screen, we can see a couple really interesting things. First of all, you see here the GitHub repo that it's attached to and that it's attached to the main branch, or you can manually deploy it. You can manually deploy your latest commit, deploy a specific commit or clear build cache and deploy. If maybe you're having an issue where you think that clearing the cache may help. And so we can see here that it says it was deployed live. And that was the commit message that I put in the copy of the GitHub repo. And the other thing we have to do is come down to the environment settings. And there's two options, as I was mentioning, the add environment variable, you can click on that and fill in your environment variables, but we're not gonna do it that way. Down here, you saw a minute ago that I created the environment variables variables in a shared group. So here you can see I can select, which is nice because once you have multiple web services, if they're gonna share the same environment variables, you can do that by simply setting up this group. And it says it right here. I will zoom in a little bit. Environment groups let you define a collection of environment variables and secret files to share across multiple services. So it's kind of a time saving thing. It may not work in all cases if you don't want to share that information. But in this case, we're going to go ahead and click on YouTube environment variables and click link. And so now you can see the environment variables that I showed, they're all in here. And without those in here, if you tried to use this service, it would blow up and it would, it would give you basically a warning message saying that it, a red air message if you tried to log in to this application. So that's what you have to do to link your environment variables. And then the other good thing right here, you can click on this link. It's called Scott's Chatter PDF Bot dot on render dot com and so I'll go ahead and click on that and it opens up the new screen that I wanted to talk about actually the authentication system and the signup system that's part of this application now and I will mention it did fail a deploy after I made those right here you can see I uh, added the environment variables. Well, I manually redeployed it and it was fine. I think something got a little messed up with that when it tried to deploy it on its own. So I just went ahead and cleared the cache and redeployed it. And you've just been seeing me use that application. So now it's, it's live and that's this URL. So I know that's a lot of things we've gone over so far, but it render really makes it easy to set up your web services and set up your environment variables and share that information. And again, this is on a free account. So it's really nice that you have all of these features built in as you're building applications like this. And so I wanted to point out the, again, the authentication and the login and the security system. So it's, it's locked down now. While we're still in the render dashboard, I did want to point out a couple things in case you've never used this service before. So I'll just kind of click through these options here on the left side so you can see what's available and what's not available. So we have logs. And so in the code, there's some debugging information being printed out just as the program's being worked on. So you can see that information here in the log, which is kind of nice when you're testing and debugging things. The disks. Like if you wanted to use a persistent disk, which is what we will be talking about in the database side, 
it costs seven dollars a month and because the database behind all of this is very small it doesn't consume that much space at all and it will never go over the seven dollars a month because if you don't have your database hosted here you have to host it somewhere else and that could cost even more money the environment variables we talked about that we don't have access to shell it says right here shells not supported for the free instant types and so you can have like an interactive shell here which is can be pretty handy PRs when you enable pull request previews for this service render will automatically create a new instance of your service anytime a pull request is created from the github repo the instance will inherit settings from the service but will be based on the code in the PR. It will have its own URL which can be used to review the code before merging. It will be deleted automatically when the PR is closed. So if I wanted to I could click on enable PR reviews. I won't do it right now but again I want to point that out. Other cloud services that I've used do offer some features like that and it's very handy if you have testers or a testing team and you don't want to interfere with your main branches you can enable these PR reviews the jobs are not supported in the free instance types but they can be handy also depending on what you need to do like one-off jobs scheduled tasks things like that it seems like I did use them at some point I haven't used them recently and then metrics they have some basic metrics here which is nice showing your usage and that I've used zero percent of my monthly quota and scaling of course since we are on the free plan we can't scale anything but if you did need to scale things up they do have some scaling options beyond a single instance and as you may have seen or noticed in the beginning of the video when we were choosing and setting this up you could choose from all kinds of different and more powerful configurations of this system but we chose the free one and then the settings just in case there was anything that I didn't go over I'll scroll through this I know we looked at this part of the setup here through the build commands the start commands auto deploy automatically deploy on every push to your repository or changes to your service question mark so I have that set to yes so as I push code to the main repository it would go ahead and automatically deploy this which is kind of nice you may not want it to do that but you can also use deploy hooks and if you wanted to set up a custom domain you can do that and here are PR previews which I believe yes we were talking about that health and alerts I really haven't used these parts of render not recently anyway um, if you want to do a health check path if you're running a server enter the path where your server will always return a 200 and they'll use it to monitor your app for zero downtime deploys so that's pretty handy and if you want to set failure notifications you can set that there or delete or another really nice thing here is if you don't want to delete your web service like for instance after I make this video I can suspend the web service so that no one can access it or if you just for whatever reason need to suspend it because maybe you don't want people accessing it you can suspend the web service it doesn't delete it and you will not be charged while the service is suspended now I know from other cloud providers I've used I don't think very many of them give you this exact option they you just have to like get rid of it or remove it but here you can suspend it so I, I did want to scroll down and point that out so there you go that's a kind of a whirlwind tour of all of the different settings and render and how you can set up a web service how you can access the running program like we did the Scott's chatter PDF bot how it how now has a built-in security system and an authentication system and also an account creation system 
and all that is feeding back into the pocket base database. Well, I hope my video was helpful to you to show you how to use the render.com service for hosting your software as a service, your web applications, some databases. As it says here, it's the fastest way to host all your static sites, cron jobs, workers, your code. It's a unified cloud to build and run your apps and websites with free TLS certificates, a global CDN, DDoS protection, private networks, and auto deploys from Git. As I showed most of those things in my video, let's scroll down briefly and see some other things they mention here. Instant deploys for all your apps. You select your service type, like your web service or web server, deployed in seconds, your master branch or main branch, what your build command is, your start command, update automatically through git commands. So it's just been really, really great service to work with. I enjoy it. It's kind of a smaller version of like Heroku or other larger providers, but their support has been super helpful when I got stuck on a couple things, which hasn't been much. And so here you can see run anything, your web services, static sites, background workers, cron jobs, Docker files, private services, Postgres, Redis. Most of those things I have set up and used in render.com. So if you're in search of a way to host your applications, you can start out on a free plan like I showed in the video and work your way up. If you need more power, you can put in your credit card and start paying for more powerful services. And I appreciate you watching the video and I will talk to you soon. If you like this channel, please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content.